Okay, we are now live. Um, let's see, welcome everyone to the official UHD Instagram. We're here to shed some light on the graduate programs offered here at UHD, um, answer some frequently asked questions. Um, we are joined today by Dr. Uh, Diane Miller, Associate Professor of Urban Education, and Dr. Elizabeth Gilmore, Assistant Professor of Criminal Justice. Thank you both. You're welcome. Um, say hi to the Gators. Peace hey, Gators. <laughs> right. Love you. I mean it. <laughs> so uh, in the College of Public Service, there are three grad programs, uh, two in urban education, Master of Arts in Teaching, and a Master of Educational Leadership. And then in Criminal Justice, there's a Master of Science in Criminal Justice. So I think before we get started, if you both could just describe the programs, the graduate programs in your departments. Uh, Dr. Gilmore, I'll start with you. Okay, sure. Um, so in our department, we have a uh, Master of Science in Criminal Justice program. Um, that program consists of um, uh, about two years of coursework if you go full time. Um, and students that graduate from that program can utilize their degree to either work in the field um, using higher level practitioner and leadership skills and or go on to pursue their PhD should they decide to do so. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. We offer two options. One is a more instructional option. So that's the Master of Arts in Teaching. So if your aim is to be the greatest department chair who ever lived or an instructional coach and help teachers hone their teaching and deepen your own teaching skills, then the Master of Arts in Teaching is for you. Uh, the Master in Educational Leadership is that pathway towards certification with TEA for the principalship. So you'll be taking the exams at the end of the two-year program. The Master of Arts in Teaching is about two years as well. Um, but the beauty of both of our degrees is that, just like Dr. Gilmore was talking about, we are very aimed at practical application in the field, and uh, these two degrees will help enhance your career trajectory in K-12 education and even higher education. Fantastic. All right. Thank you both. Um, okay, Dr. Miller. Oh, I'm live. You are. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, I can see them all here. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So, with the urban education program, either of these, what are some things that might uh, enhance a student's application if they're considering? What, what makes a strong application? Well, everybody's mind always goes to your personal statement, your letters of recommendation, uh, your GPA, your transcripts, all those things are necessary for the application, official application. But what you need to be thinking about before you su press submit on that application is, have you discussed that application with your support system? Because for most of our students, uh, graduate work is a, is a group affair. <laughs> it is not a, a singular um, undertaking, and so you're going to need what I call that midnight motivator to be on board as well. That's gonna be, I don't know, your kids, your significant other, your mom, your dog, whomever, who's gonna say, you can do this when you're up at midnight doing homework and it's stressful because mm -hmm. you're working all day long and you're doing classes at night, and you're doing homework. But if you have that midnight motivator, you need to enroll them in your application process as well. They need to be a part of it. We don't ask for that. There's no checkbox on the application for that, but I'm just telling you on the download, you have to have one of those people in your life. Our dogs. Dogs work too. All right. Uh, Dr. Gilmore, do you have advice for students who maybe they're considering graduate school applying to one of these programs, um, but they're concerned they're not the perfect fit for it? Are they majored in something else? Or something like that? Okay. So I think the first thing is, is like the elephant in the room, is that everyone's terrified of applying to graduate school. Even the most, right? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Like, even the most qualified candidates are terrified of applying to graduate school. We have this um, term we throw around a lot, even higher ed, called imposter syndrome, where you feel like you don't belong in the room. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's super ner common to feel like, oh, I don't know if I am even qualified, even if you are completely qualified. So I think the first thing is, is to acknowledge that. Um, if you are um, a non-traditional student, um, or maybe you don't know anyone um, that went to grad school, that was my experience. I didn't even know what a graduate program was when I applied for one. Um, I was told by a professor to apply for one, and so I was like, okay, sure, but I had no idea what it was. Um, so I think uh, the first thing is, is to not allow yourself to get intimidated or overcome with fear, um, because that can be really 
powerful in kind of deterring you from pursuing something. Um, if you feel like you're a non-traditional candidate or maybe you have um, some things on your, um, on your transcripts or something that may be a concern. So for example, sometimes we have students that they did a first couple semesters at a community college. Maybe they weren't right right to college and they didn't do so well. And now they transferred to UHD a couple of years later. They've grown um, professionally, personally, and now they're doing great. Discuss that in your statement. Um, you know, it, it's, it's something you can acknowledge and you can talk about. You know, I really actually learned a lot. I mean, I would argue that we learn the best things from some of our failures, some of our mistakes. So articulate that. It's an opportunity for you to tell us about yourself as a candidate. Um, and so we have a very diverse pool of candidates in our graduate programs. Um, and so don't think that you have to fit into a cookie cutter mold of what you may think a traditional graduate student is because to be transparent, there really isn't one. And everyone feels like they're not that grad student. So apply. Um, ask your professors if they have any advice uh, to give. Reach out to mentors. Um, but certainly don't let fear paralyze you. Great. Uh, hopefully the chat enjoys that one. <laughs> oh, and our is probably breaking the no, no, breaking, no, breaking no, straight no, in the yeah, battery. No, yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, Dr. Miller, uh, beyond academics, what kind of support does the Urban Ed program offer graduate students and staff, career services, financial, mental health, anything else? First thing I want to say with that is our faculty, because our faculty, you know, just I'll use myself as an example. I was in K through 12 education for 19 years before I came into the higher ed space. Um, I still am connected to local districts. And so our faculty are very well aware, lots of them have many years in the public school space before they came to UHD. And so we know how to specifically support you for where you're wanting to be, to give you career advice, to hook you up with a friend at a district who told us through Facebook two nights ago that they had an opening in their school. Those kind of conversations are happening all the time. So yes, career services gives you that formal, let's beef up your resume, let's work on interview skills, all that. But the organic, authentic conversations that you have with faculty who are still so connected to the local school districts is really key for that. Um, as far as financial support is concerned, UHD is still one of the most affordable universities in the state of Texas. Um, you're still getting a bunch of bang for your buck. And so um, financial aid is there for you to apply for and to get. But um, overall, the product that you're buying at the end is, is very affordable and we're there to support you. The last thing I would say is that, and Dr. Gilmore's seen this too, the evolution of our basic needs department at the university has just been astounding. Used to, there were a few services and student services and you could dig through it for the website and you could try to find some counseling if you needed it or you could find, try to find some financial aid in an emergency if you needed it. But I think with COVID and everything else, we really have formalized that support process at UHD. You know, 40 pounds of food a week, no questions asked. Free counseling, no questions asked. And it's all really organized well on the website now, that basic needs um, part of it. So I, I love that. I love that we are really listening to what students need because graduate school, as Dr. Gilmore said, is not easy, but you can be successful and just make, you know, avail yourself of the resources that are available. Um, okay, last one, Dr. Gilmore. Can you share a favorite success story from a student um, recent, you know, farther in the past? <laughs> um, or someone who's maybe in the program right now, or someone that comes to mind when you think of how they, uh, where they were, where they are now, I'm, I'm proud of the work they've done. Okay, um, so I think the first thing about this is that if you're coming to the College of Public Service, whether you're coming for, you know, to pursue urban education, our social work, undergraduate programs, or criminal justice, like, you're coming because you want to help people. You're coming because, like, in your heart, like, you want to serve. And so I feel like this question is really tough because um, our students are, like, the coolest population to work around because they, they go out and they just, they change the world. I mean, I, I kind of make this, like, low-key joke all the time with them, but, like, I feel like I'm on... Like in a, almost like in a comic book movie, and I go like, I'm assembling the A team, you know, <laughs> because like they go out and they just do the best and coolest things. So um, it's really hard to pick, 
you know, one or a hundred. I mean, I could, I could totally kill your battery um, and, and, and talk about this please for don't. hours. Um, and she'll but, probably make us cry. Yeah, yeah, talking and about some cry. specific I student because we do. We get very invested it in our is, students. It's such a big it's, deal. And like, they all come here. I mean, all of them. I know some of the urban ed students, right? Like, they come and they just they go out there and they do such impactful things in the community. I get goosebumps. Mm -hmm. um, so it's mm -hmm. so hard to pick one or two or twelve. Um, you know, I think that recently we had a student um, who she just graduated last semester and um, she came into UHD as a freshman, so mm -hmm. which is a little unusual for our university. We tend to get a lot more transfer students. Mm -hmm. And um, first student, like many of our students, first student in her family to go to college, uh, first student in her family to earn a bachelor's degree, which she earned um, in our program, and then certainly the first student to earn a master's degree. And mm -hmm. um, she just constantly engaged with on-campus events as much as possible um, and you know now she's you know she's working at an agency she's very involved and you know when we talk you know because we have a mentorship relationship so she'll call and she'll talk and um, the things that she's asking me for advice on I'm just so proud of her because um, you know I mean I re again I really do think that these students are they're going out and they're changing the world we had a we had a panel recently, I think you can probably find it online, um, where we featured alums, and it was just re some recent alums, and um, some of them are publishing international papers, in, in, uh, engaging oh, in, awesome. with kind of like an international team, right, and they're looking at, um, you know, discrepancies in terms of uh, decisions with juveniles, um, particularly juveniles of color, right, and how, um, you know, systems and school systems and different things have certain impacts and how they can make things better. and. This is a student who just graduated two years ago, yeah. right? And um, and they're, I like they're I, doing the work. They're, they're going the out and they're doing the work for our yeah. community. And we're so proud of them. Mm -hmm. And so I think you can. I think that's one of the things you can attest to with all of these programs is that when the students leave here, I mean they, but even before the, they hit the ground running, and they're what they're doing, the work they're doing, it just reverberates throughout the community. And we feel it. We're proud of them. Um, we both love our students so much. We love being a part of that that part of the program. So uh, they're all awesome. Every single one. Of them. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, two things, just for everyone in the chat. What she's talking about is called Vital Alumni, I believe. Mm -hmm. And you can find that online. You can just Google UHC Vital Alumni. Um, there's one on urban education alumni that yes. come back. Dr. Crystal White did that um, one. It was great. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, what else? Um, social work alumni, I think, is coming up. Mm -hmm. So check that out if you're interested. Um, okay, I think we've come to the end of this interview. <laughs> Excellent. Right. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you both for your time. Um, anyone in the chat, you can go to uhc.edu slash cps to learn more about applications, um, mm -hmm. what's required of you there. Uh, July 31st. You heard it there. Yep. July 31st. 31st. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have it here, late July. Yep, okay. yep. Um, That's the application deadline. All right. So everyone who tuned in, thank you. If you have questions, um, leave them in the comment section after we post this video. Uh, of course, you can reach out to Dr. Miller, mm -hmm. Dr. Gilmore. Um, stay tuned. Next month, we'll talk to uh, faculty in the College of Sciences and Technology. Um, wait, goodbye. Right. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, Gators. Everyone.